In this lesson, we're going to do some calculations, but write the answers in terms of pi. This means the answers are going to be exact as opposed to rounded. Let's take a look at the first example. We need to work out the area and perimeter of this shape. This is a circle. The formula for area of a circle is area equals pi r squared, where r is the radius. In this circle, the diameter is 8 centimetres, which means the radius is half of that, it's just 4 centimetres. So the area is going to be pi times 4 squared, which is pi times 16, and I'm just going to write that as 16 pi. That answer is in exact form. If I tried calculating that out on a calculator, I would get 50.265 and so on, but I would never be able to write the exact answer as a decimal because the decimal expansion goes on forever. That's because the decimal expansion of pi itself goes on forever. So when you multiply it by a number like 16, you're also going to get an answer with a decimal expansion that goes on forever. So this kind of question is a lot easier than it seems. It's actually less effort than trying to calculate exactly using a calculator. We also need to work out the perimeter of this shape. Now the perimeter of a circle has a special name, it's called the circumference. And the formula is circumference equals pi times the diameter. In this case that is pi times 8 because we saw the diameter was 8 centimetres and that gives us an answer of 8 pi centimetres. If you remember in algebra we can leave out the multiplication sign and also we like to put numbers before letters when we're multiplying them together which is why we get 8 pi here and 16 pi up here. If you tried to work this out on a calculator you would get 25.13 something but that decimal expansion would go on forever and you would never be able to write it out exactly. This second example is a little more complicated. We have a shape that looks like it was once a square but one of the corners has been cut in such a way that it now forms a quarter of a circle. Let's try to work out the area. What I'm going to do is split it up into shapes where I do know how to find the area. If I draw a line across here, like this, I've now got three parts to this shape. I've got a small shape there, a larger one here, and I've got my quarter of a circle. Let's consider this shape here. It looks like a square, but let's just check. This length is 10 centimetres and this is 5 centimetres, which means that this section here has to be 5 centimetres as well. So the area of x is 5 times 5, which gives us 25 centimetres squared. Let's have a look at y. This is a rectangle that is 5 centimetres high and 10 centimetres across. So the area of y is going to be 5 times 10 and that equals 50 centimetres squared. Finally, I need to work out the area of this quarter of a circle. Now, the radius of this quarter of a circle is 5 centimetres. That distance there is the same as what we've worked out here, which is 5 centimetres. Now, the area of a circle is pi r squared. I only want a quarter of that because I've only got a quarter of a circle. So the area of z is a quarter times pi times the radius squared, which is 5 squared. And 5 squared is 25. So that means I've got a quarter times pi times 25, which is the same as 25 quarters times pi, or 25 over 4 times pi. That's in centimetres squared. The total area is what I get when I add all of these up, 
Now I've got two numbers that I can add up, 25 plus 50, which makes 75. And this number here, if I work it out on a calculator, is going to be something with an infinite decimal expansion. So I'm going to leave it as a multiple of pi. So I just need to add this on to the 75. So the total area equals 75 plus 25 quarters of pi. I can't simplify this anymore. These are not like terms. 75 is just a number, it's not a multiple of pi, whereas this term here is a multiple of pi, so I'm going to keep it separate in the expression for the sum. Now we need to work out the perimeter of the shape. I'm going to delete some of the working I've done on the diagram for the area. So the perimeter, the distance around the outside of this shape, is going to be what we get when we add up all of these straight line distances, the 5 centimetres, the 10, this 10, and the 5, and this curved distance here. This curved distance is a quarter of the circumference of the full circle. We know the radius of this circle is 5 centimetres, which means that the diameter would be 10 centimetres. Remember, the diameter is double the radius. So the circumference would be pi times the diameter, and that is pi times 10, or 10 pi. We need to remember to divide all of that by 4, because we only want a quarter of the circumference. So that's going to give us this curved length here. And we then need to add on the 5, the 10, the 10, and the 5 to give us our perimeter. We're still not finished. We can simplify this expression. These numbers here are not in terms of pi, so they are like terms, which we can collect. They are going to add up to 30. And we've still got this 10 pi over 4, which we can simplify to 5 pi over 2. All we've done there is divide the numerator and denominator of that fraction by 2. So this perimeter is 30 plus 5 pi over 2. Remember that's a distance all the way around the shape and we were dealing with units of centimetres. So our answer is also going to be in centimetres. Now you might be wondering why pi has ended up inside the fraction when we were working out the perimeter and why it was outside the fraction when we were working out the area. You need to be really clear that it doesn't make a difference whether the pi is outside the fraction or in the numerator like this. Let's take 5 pi over 2 for example. If we consider 5 over 2 lots of pi, then from the lesson on multiplying fractions, you should know that that is the same as 5 over 2 lots of pi over 1. And if you multiply those together, you end up with 5 pi over 2. So these are the same, they are equivalent. It doesn't matter whether you've got a pi in the numerator or out here. The reason the pi ended up inside the fraction in this case was that we first worked out 10 pi, which was the circumference of a full circle, and then we divided all of that by 4. So we ended up writing all of that over 4. But as I say, you should be equally comfortable working with expressions in this form and in this form.